Hi, this is Lady Shell. I'm here today to give you a tutorial in Fantasy Grounds, or what I call Fantasy Grounds 101. This is for new players, and I am going to show you from a player stand, stand uh, player's viewpoint um, what it looks like and where things are on the table. So, this is the loading screen. I have my table set up. And this is my second op uh, second um, option of the game. If you were using a demo, you would not see these two buttons. For these are for loading campaigns, and you won't be able to load campaigns if you don't have a licensed version. But <clears throat> you can check for updates. And if this button was red before you go into your game, you would want to uh, click this updates because it's going to run through the different programs on your system and update whatever needs updating. Now basically if you signed up for a game on Fantasy Grounds College you should uh, plan to be on the Discord at least an hour before your game because your DM most likely will open the table about an hour before their game starts and the reason this is done is so that people can go in early and they can check and see uh, what pregens are available, what they might want to play, take a look at the what what's available on on the player, on the uh, different uh, characters, what kind of spells, what kind of skills, you know, get a feel for you know what you want to play and what's available. So um, the DM will tell you what room to meet in and what time to meet. And then you would go into the voice chat and then you could uh, converse with the DM and the other players prior to the game and during the game, of course. And uh, there's also a text uh, screen that's um, for the particular game room that you're in. So you can type things in text, but basically people are going to be in the game. They're not going to be so much... Um, looking at the screen there. Um, okay, so we talked about updates. The next thing I want to tell you is the settings. And this is if you have a smaller screen or are running on a laptop, a 15 or a 13 event, 13, 15, 17 inch laptop, you'll probably want to adjust your UI. So you're going to click yeah, yes, and it's going to give you this option here. Now, right here where it says UI scale, uh, the higher the number, the larger the screen. Um, it goes from 50 to 200. 50 will be very, very small writing, and 200 would be very, very big writing and not very much space in the middle to, to uh, use. And this is where you're going to load your maps and stuff and have your character sheet. So you want as much of this large area here as possible, which is why you would change your UI sc scale from 100, which would be the default, to whatever. And uh, I set mine to 85 because I have a 17-inch laptop, and I find that this is a good setting for me. I'm going to close this down, and it takes me back to the load on screen, loading screen. Now, as you can see up here, this says that I have the ultimate. And then this little box here, this is the data folder. And this would have all your campaigns and your extensions and your modules and your portraits and your tokens. Just everything to do with the game. And if you were a DM, you could add things to your game by dragging them directly into the, this folder. Okay, but we're not doing anything with that. This uh, would uh, change from windowed mode to full screen mode, and then this would close down. Now, we're going to um, join the game. And generally, when you join a game, you're going to put your name here. And you're going to put the host address. And generally, the host address is going to be a four-word alias. This alias just protects the um, 
DM's um, IP address, so it gives you a four-word character, or alias, rather, and um, I'm just going to double-click here because it's just going to use the last settings that I used on, on my previous um, connection. Now, the reason I've got localhost, you would not be typing localhost. Um, I have localhost because I'm logging into my own table. Otherwise, I would be, if I was logging into someone else's table, I would use whatever the alias that they provided. And when you first join the table, this is what you see. You will close this campaign setup, and you will see my previous use of <laughs> these two characters. But when you log into a game where there are pregens, this this is where the pregens would be. And generally they will not have pictures. The only reason these have pictures is because I had a previous version of this open. So I'm going to just take this druid and you'll see that her picture now goes up here. You can change the name right here to your own name, whatever, it doesn't matter. You could change the picture by double clicking. You could change to just any picture you want. I double clicked and that gives me the token also. So this is your character sheet. These are your abilities. It says that this um, druid is a, has a hermit background and, and she is a wood elf. And she is third level druid. These pregens that uh, you see that I have here are ones that I made for my upcoming adventure, Mystery of the Turtle Spear. And there are 15 of them to choose from, but I just thought I'd use them in this example. Um, some other things on the table, you can see the dice are down here. This is the tower. If I right click and move the tower over here, it makes it a lot more convenient when you're running skills checks to be able to have it all close to your dice. And I'm gonna move, I'm gonna adjust my size of my chat screen because I don't really need, I don't like the, the narrow chat screen. I like it to be around the same width as the, with the dice tower there. And I like to have the combat tracker. I'm gonna move that so it's even. Okay, close that back up again. Um, when you have, uh, say you have five characters on the table, you will have five different portraits up here. Everybody's portrait will be here. And if you wanted to talk to someone else in the game, you could whisper to them by right clicking and using the hand. Well, actually it wouldn't be a hand, it would be a this is my own token, so it's not going to let me talk to myself. But it would have like a little head, and it looked like it's talking. And then you could just type something down in the chat window, and it would be, you know, hello. <laughs> but see, uh, if you did this where you did the whisper to the person, only that person would be the only one besides the DM that could see what you said. Now... What other things do we want to cover? Okay, how about the party sheet? When you're playing in a game and you end up uh, finishing an encounter, you may have some loot and that loot, the DM will put the loot in here and allow it to be distributed between the people in the party. Party sheet is also where you would put your watch order. You would say who's taking first watch, second watch, third watch, etc. You could also move the tokens onto this and use it as sort of a makeshift map because you see it is gridded. And you can also use it for elevation. If you had characters that were flying, you would put their tokens higher and then others lower, etc. Um... So that's the party sheet. Then there is the color palette. And this, if you change this, this will change the color of your dice. 
You can make it any color you want. You can also change the color from black text to white text and make it darker, make it lighter. And that's, that's to distinguish everybody's dice from each other. And when you roll, you just drop your dice end screen. And I got a great old two. Let's see what I get here. Okay, that's better, 12. If your DM asks you to do a skill check of, say, perception, you might ask for you to give it to him in the tower. You would take the dice and you would drag it into the tower and just drop it right there. And you can see that you saw a shadow. You did not see what the roll was. Only the DM sees what the roll is. That's what this tower symbol is. It says that you rolled it in the tower. And uh, that's done to keep the immersion. And so that you wouldn't know if, if he was asking you to do perception and you did your perception but you got a two and he tells you well you think you see this but you're not quite sure uh, you won't know if nothing is there or if you just rolled bad whereas if you rolled your perception straight in the op open you would see oh hey you got an eight so when he tells you oh you don't see much you say well course I don't because I didn't really roll very well. Same thing with like stealth is if you think you're hiding and you stealth and the DM doesn't tell you what's going on and when you make your move then you're seen then you'll say oh hey I must roll bad whereas if you rolled whoops rolled in the tower or not in the tower and you rolled a 17 you know you're pretty pretty you got a pretty good roll there and uh, you're pretty good chance of not being seen so we talked about the character sheet you have their various things in the character sheet these are the features of this character these are the things in their inventory these are the backgrounds. Um, when I set these up, I didn't give them a gender because anybody could use it. I just gave them personality traits. I didn't give them, well, I did give them a background. Everybody's got a background on my, on, in the characters that I made. And then this is your actions tab. And you can see this droid has a scimitar and these are the consumables. This uh, lets you track. There was one healing potion, so when she used the healing potion, she would check this off, and then it will not deduct it from your inventory, but that just helps you track it. And the same thing with rations and tor torches. And the uh, racial traits at the beginning of the game, she would click this little effect, and this would put in the combat tracker. Um, the effects. Let me go into my other screen and set her on the combat tracker and I will show you when she clicks this it puts the effect on here that says she has fey ancestry and the mask of the wild is something uh, it's like for hiding. I guess if she was in the um, forest or something and she wanted to hide she would say she would put this on herself then there are the different spells here's her spells and her cantrips and then down here are the standard actions your dodge your help your hide you're ready so that's her sheet and i showed you the combat tracker and the um party sheet and i showed you the colors and then we have the modifiers, which are if you were taking an opportunity attack or if you were taking an attack, but the but the um, opponent that you are attacking is behind cover, you would click the cover button first. There's also effects, like if you were charmed, 
you click charmed and now you see she's charmed but you know that's not really something that you're whoops gonna do because she's elf elves have resistance to charm so I'm going to take that off let's give her invisible okay so she's invisible that means that anybody trying to attack her is going to have disadvantage and it as a player you could always take off what you put on your sheet or if you were say you were a cleric and you did bless to the people in the party uh, when the bless went off if for some reason it didn't actually trigger you could de uh, remove the the bless from the eye from the combat tracker by clicking the little edit button there so those are your effects and then this the options button which is more for the DM and um, I didn't tell you how to load a book basically when you go into someone's game probably the only thing you're gonna want to take is the player's handbook which I've already loaded however if you did need to if the the DM asked you to load something else like for example since I'm a druid maybe you would want to have this a uh, one click druid that is how you load you would click where it says load and when the book opens up like that that means it's loaded and it's available which you could see right here and it shows you these are the different wild shapes that you could pick and it uh, will change your when you change into a wild shape it will change you into it will change your token to the appropriate token and um, give you the stats for that character <clears throat> that animal that you turn into um, over here it's there are four options of the buttons over here this is set for player which is what you will be using when you're playing in the game GM is what the GM can use and I mean anybody can click anything but generally speaking the GM gets the GM version player gets the player version and when you're making a character you click this and this will give you the appropriate flags on the right side for what you will be needing when you're making a character and then this is all this shows you all the buttons that are available and uh, this text that you see over here the style the font is a an extension that I downloaded um, this uh, just gives it a, a larger font because I am an older person over 40 and when you get over 40 you can't see things as good as you did when you were 20 so you seen uh, the character sheet we went over the buttons we talked about the flags and I think that's about it um, if you have any other questions you feel free to contact me on the fantasy grounds discord I go by lady shell and I hope to see you soon